Okay, uh, we'll start the second part of the, of the course, which is about the semi-automatic segmentation. Now, with the semi-automatic segmentation, uh, in contrast to what you've been doing, uh, the SNAP itself will do a lot of the uh, filling in of the, of the segmentation of interest. We call it semi-automatic because unlike some tools where um, it's fully automated and you, you give it the image and outcomes of segmentation, in SNAP, um, the, the user is part of this process. So uh, the user gives uh, some quick guidance to the segmentation. You use your prior knowledge, your expertise uh, to help tell SNAP what to segment, and then the algorithm does the, you know, the boring bits of actually filling in every, every voxel, and there can be obviously a lot of them. So how does uh, the semi-automated segmentation work? The, the pre-segmentation phase always comes first. Uh, the user identifies parts of the image simply as foreground and background, so it's a binary, a binary thing, and we, there are a couple of ways that, to do that, which we'll go through. And then the active contour phase is what the algorithm does. Again, under your supervision, you can watch it, the segmentation evolve and stop it. You can pause it, change its parameters, carry on. Um, if you don't like the way it's going, you can go backwards, reset, start over, try something uh, different. So um, the user will place seeds inside the structure of interest after this pre-thresholding pre that gets rid of things you definitely don't care about. Uh, you place the seeds inside the structure of interest and then they're grown by the algorithm until it fills the structure that you're trying to segment. Here is an example uh, of a, a tumor data set where we have multiple modalities. We do a pre-segmentation uh, that can use these multiple modalities or just one of them. And then we get this blue and white uh, pre-segmented image. So the white, what we want to see is the structure that we're interested in being uh, white um, or at least grayscale and the stuff that we definitely don't care about being blue. So if you can get your structure of interest surrounded by blue, that's, that's great because that's then background and the segmentation knows that's uh, not going to be part of the final segmentation. Two pre-segmentation modes. One is thresholding, um, and you just, much the same way you change the image contrast, you can set this threshold and you can see it update in real time, blue and white, and you can set a lower threshold, an upper threshold, or both. So the red line overlaying the uh, histogram there shows you um, the upper and lower threshold, and only stuff between that, uh, those bars are, are going to be in the image, are going to be white. The other way on the right side is a classification-based approach. In that way, you initialize the segmentation by telling it different kinds of things that are in the image, uh, so different kinds of tissue or different aspects of the tumor uh, in this case. And then from that, the, uh, the algorithm will try and do a classification approach and just kind of learn what's going to be foreground and background. So the user selects these. Or paint examples. So these are both places where um, you're going to be. This is the semi-automated part. This is a, the manual part. From there, uh, the segmentation will evolve. So I'm just showing the outline of the segmentation here. Um, and it's an active contour evolution. And it's driven by these forces, which are shown as the arrows. So there is an image force that's based on what the image looks like. Uh, and it will try to push the segmentation in if it's outside. If it's, if it's outside the uh, region we're segmenting, and it's going to try to push the segmentation out if we're in the interior of the object. And sorry, sorry. The, um, the second part is a smoothing force. So the orange arrows uh, try to penalize uh, very bumpy parts of the segmentation. And you can adjust that depending on what you're doing. If you're segmenting something that looks smooth, like a football, um, you can uh, try and penalize these knobbly bits. Uh, if you've got a, 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 an image that's very detailed and there's, there's a lot of um, bumpy surfaces, uh, you can be less strict about trying to enforce that smoothness. So here is an example of the active contour evolution. Um, we place these balls that are rendered in 3D as spheres, and that's just the manual initialization. Uh, and then it grows as it's shown on the right. Uh, and you can see the 3D window updating. And this is the active contour part. You can, you can stop this at any time, look at it, um, but it keeps growing until you tell it to stop. Or it, be, it, it will eventually hopefully converge, um, and then you just hit stop, and then you're done. Or, or you can go to manual editing after that. OK, so I'm going to go on to a quick live demo. Get 
out of here.